kind of while everybody's signing on, just talk about some of the happenings, what's happening in the area, some of the construction, some of the, I don't know, we just had uh, uh, a near, I can't say a near miss, but it was a near miss enough last week. We had a good little test run on our our storm prep uh, procedures and and I think we're good and ready. We don't need any more practice of that. So uh, uh, maybe that's all for the year. We hope so. But anytime we have that, right, we got a little hot spot out on the, out in the near the Yucatan Peninsula now that's you know possibly going to do something. And if that gets in the Gulf, that just kind of slows down reservations already. Excuse me, and and but uh, just thought I'd talk about new bridges. So the bridge in Orange Beach, um, and it's well underway. They're blowing and going on that bridge now, clearing this week. They just cleared on the north side of that. Uh, well, it was County Road Four. I don't know where where the bridge crosses over right before the the intercoastal waterway. Um, and so, but that's underway and looks like it's going to take, it's expected to be summer, I think 26, uh, maybe fall. It just kind of depends on weather, right? Everybody just, this weather and construction. Um, and I've gotten the wrong, thank you. Uh, there you go. I'm having where I'm having, I'm controlling Bryant's computer. So <laughs> from my remote position, so we're trying to make sure we got this right. Uh, the Gulf Shores, right? They're widening 59 and taking up all of the lanes on the two, on the bridge, the Holmes bridge and on highway 59 and Gulf Shores. And so they have to add a pedestrian bridge to that. They had uh, one bridge design. It was a very nice design, but came in, you know, I think they were hoping for, you know, 15 or 20 million. I think it came in like 80. Um, and so they went back to the drawing board of simpler, plainer um, pedestrian bridge that they should get started on uh, I don't know, next few months, I would think by the, maybe perhaps by the end of the year, I don't know. Uh, and then the construction on Highway 59, and that's, we made it through the summer with it. Um, I was worried about summer. It certainly changed patterns and how traffic gets around town. Um, you know, adding or taking away the toll bridge. Now everybody in Orange Breach uses that bridge. And so I know if you've left town this summer on checkout time, boy, getting out of Orange Beach at, you know, after 10 in the morning, about 10, 11 in the morning is a real challenge um, off of Canal Road there. So, um, but that, the Highway 59, uh, you know, that's going to take well into the fall of 2026. Um, and then they're going to do, they're going north. Uh, right now, they're coming from County Road 8 um, south. And so then they'll go north uh, a little bit and, and catch, I think, all the way to 10, but I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, um Sports fields. Now, this one is a big tourism attraction, bring in a lot more business type, um, you know. And so if you don't know, the uh, the CVB, the Convention and Visitors Bureau in town in, in, in coordination with the cities have formed a sports commission that brings in sports tourism. Travel ball is baseball, softball, volleyball, um, soccer. Those are the major sports for that. And, um, you know, we were doing really well. We used to, back in 2015, and all we had like 24 baseball, softball fields they could play on and soccer fields. And now we're down to 11 today because the cities and their school systems have taken over 
the ball fields and they want to use those. And so they're um, kind of just using those fields to uh, for their schools and for the citizens. Um, and and so the CVB bought 111 acres up on the expressway kind of behind is where they're building the school is across the street from that and we're having funding issues we don't know we need well really 60 million dollars now that uh, inflation's hit us uh, to build we want to build 24 ball fields and um, and eventually an indoor facility but we need a hundred and another 50 million for that so you know, just trying, we're back at square one, I would say, with funding, um, you know, working on it this week, trying to get funding for this. To me, that is the, the thing that can move the needle the most on tourism here, adding, bringing in more people. Um, we're talking the first year of bringing that in estimated you know, 50,000 room nights. Um, and, you know, by year five, 120 or 130,000 room nights to bring in, and we could certainly use that business. Well, I'm going to get us started. I think it's about time to start. I've, I'm showing four o'clock. And, um, and we've got a whole bunch of people on from the staff, and I'm just going to... Um, refrain from trying to point everybody out because I don't see everybody all together. And so we're asking everybody to stay muted because a lot of background noise can uh, can interfere with this. And so um, if you we're very informal, uh, this is, uh, you know, to try to update, tell everybody where the market is. And so it's just informal. We're going to have a conversation and, and really I'm, I like getting to see everybody and talking to everybody. And so we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, and I've got a few people that are going to present with me, Bryant Loy, um, our revenue manager, uh, is perhaps going to do the most and Billy Widener or, uh, marketing chief marketing officer, and then uh, uh, my cousin John Brett, that's on uh, Tim Brett's computer there, and then so uh, he's going to talk about sales and stuff. And so we'd like to go ahead and get started. And uh, first and foremost, we're very grateful for your business. We understand and know and take it at heart uh, that you can rent with anybody. Um, we think uh, the partnership is uh, really valuable, and so we're very grateful, um, and we want to continue to earn your business every day. So uh, that's how we're approaching things. So I didn't mention the upcoming events. Um, Brian, I got to make sure that I can annotate. There, I got it. I'm going to put that up. All right. And... So we'll get started. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, kind of a summer, early fall, and a lot of you were on a, we had one of these late June, early July, I can't remember the date. Um, but, uh, and so we're going to kind of pick up there where we left off, but we'll talk a little bit about the year. Uh, how is fall and winter looking and then uh, any early insights that we can see um, on, uh, you know, for next year. Talk a little bit about uh, annual evaluations uh, and, of course, sales. And uh, then we'll get to any, if somebody has a question, you can hit that little raise your hand icon and we can try to get you. We'll have a couple of stop periods where we'll, kind of stop and take some questions. So uh, with that, I'm going to start off the recap and then turn it over to Bryant in just a, just a second here. I want to kind of talk about this summer. I will tell you, it's a very difficult and challenging year. Um, demand, when I say demand, I mean people looking and interested in searching 
on the internet or calling just the traffic for people trying wanting to come to the beach or travel period uh google adwords you know you can go to orange beach or gulf shores condos or you know vacation rentals in alabama and that traffic is down to perhaps 28 29 percent uh from last year at you know is pretty been consistent and so it's been a challenging year we saw things early that it was going to be and we made adjustments early and i think um that you'll see that we ended up having a pretty good year not you know uh, i would say within arm's length i'd like to say within spitting distance but that's not uh, polite uh, of last year's numbers and we're very close to last year's numbers in many respects beat those but um and so uh the the booking started strong early for the choice units the nicer units those owners that do a little bit more those units really did well getting better rates and then it just about 90 days out from an arrival date to about that 30 day mark, it just kind of, it's different than it's ever been. It just kind of, we had a lull in our bookings. That last 30 days was incredible. We had a significant increase in last minute um, bookings. And what enables that technology, right? Uh, they can go on Verbo and see what's available. Uh, and not get in a hurry if there's plenty available. Rain forecasts are much more important uh, or much bigger influencer on bookings now when you have those last minute reservations. And so what we kind of, I would say what we saw was very strong rate sensitivity from, from guests, from uh, renters, uh, real rate sensitivity, sensitivity, the lower demand, uh, less people searching Google or searching on our site or any Verbo. Verbo is way down. Um, and of course, strong competition. You know, we've got a lot of competitors out there, national brands that are publicly traded now that are, you know, really trying to, um, you know, really edge in. It ended up this year booking nights. That turned out to be our priority. Um, there were a little bit of opportunity for some rates, um, but we, I will tell you, it turned into more, you know, trying to book nights, not at the cost of rates, but, you know, uh, Bryant, why don't you kind of explain what I'm talking about? Yeah, definitely. So, um... Just kind of going into a little bit of what we saw, um, you know, for the summer, um, our occupancy this year ended up being pretty good. Um, but it's it's not just about occupancy. It's that balance that we play, uh, kind of really walking the tightrope to make sure that we're maximizing the revenue. Because um, really, you know, there's there's two kind of key components to how we maximize the revenue for for our owners. It's uh, occupancy is a big part of it, but also drawing the best possible rate on top of that. Um, you can't just go for rates, can't just go for occupancy. If you do that, you end up definitely um, leaving the other one um, un untouched and, and, and hurting yourself. But um, what we're going to look at right now is our summer. And so summer right here is going to be June, July, and August. Uh, we're just going to look at our revenue per unit across the summer and uh, how we did versus uh, 2023 revenue per unit. And then we're going to take a look at how the market did in 2023 and 2024 in revenue per unit as well, uh, just so we get an idea. So uh, what we have on the screen right now, uh, the blue solid line is uh, Brett Robinson's revenue per unit for 2024 uh, across those three months. Uh, we're going to layer in real quick a, uh, a number or a line that shows last year that dotted um, kind of very light colored line is our revenue per unit for the same period that we looked at uh, right now last year. And it, I mean, it's uh, based on the same days a week and everything. And so you can see that, you know, early part of the summer, we, we struggled to keep pace. We had some really good weeks across the middle of June. Um, let's see if I can get my annotate up here. 
Um, you know, so so a little bit of a struggle right over here across the early portion to keep up with last year's pace. Um, but then these these middle two weeks of of June and then the first two weeks of July were very, very strong demand that we were able to really um, pick up some good revenue, um, even outperform some of last year's numbers across those four weeks, uh, right in the middle of what we call that really peak prime summer time period. Um, and then we kind of hung around with last year uh, for, for a latter, latter portion of um, July. And I will tell you, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit more specifically about August, but, you know, the first eight days of August were fantastic this year, and then it really slowed up quite a bit. Um, when we layer in the market here to kind of see how they did across the same time periods, um, we're going to see that they were unable to keep pace with us in terms of our revenue per unit performance um, across really any of these dates across the summer this year. And when we layer in there last year, you can see they were a lot closer to us in 2023 than they were in 2024. And um, a lot of that is because you run into when you have a very competitive market like this year, where there is a lot of change and volatility and, and necessary, it's very necessary for us to make adjustments on the fly, to make them early and to make sure we're maximizing our revenue through the right rate management and the right marketing strategy. A lot of the companies that we're looking at in the market don't make some of those adjustments. They either kind of set their rates and let them go. It's called a set and forget process, or they end up overcorrecting and doing something crazy like cutting rates 30, 40 percent. And if you were here during one of our earlier calls, I think in, in July, we talked about one of our competitors that, that did exactly that. They went down um, in, in their spring period and were cutting rates 30, 40 percent across their summer. And I will tell you, they were selling units that we sell for seven hundred dollars a night in the summer for three hundred dollars a night. And so there's there's this balance that we talk about here to make sure that we're really maximizing the revenue and that we're looking at all the different pieces of the puzzle um, to really find that right delicate balance to make sure that we're we're hitting things in the right spot and making the most money we can for you. And now we have to take those off the screen. Um, to go into a little bit more about the the summer discussion, so uh, the momentum from June did not carry all the way through July. So again, we we talked a little bit at the beginning of July about how fantastic June had kind of really finished out for us, and we felt really. Um, you know, we were feeling really good at the time. We were feeling pretty confident that, um, you know, maybe we've seen things really start to finally turn that corner and we're back into that really strong demand period. Um, you know, I just kind of mentioned a little bit those last two weeks of July and, and the first couple of weeks of August didn't quite see that. Um, there's a couple of reasons we think may be part of that, but, um, you know, rates were just unable to hold versus the past couple of years for those last two weeks, July, first week, of August, um, Part of this is, is due to school starting back earlier. 75% uh, of our key markets went back to school by August 8th this year, which is the earliest date that we've seen them go back since we started tracking these school schedules. And um, what that ends up meaning is it shifts everybody's vacations up a little bit. And so people who are going back to school, we are, again, we are a family market. We are a family travel market where people are bringing down their full families, kids, and everybody's school age children. When, when they go back to school earlier, People are having to prepare for going back to school earlier, so they don't want to travel that last week or two right before school starts because they're trying to get everybody back on bedtimes, get back on schedules, get them off the video games, get them back into kind of normal life, real life, uh, not summer life anymore. And so um, we did see that impact the latter half of July, definitely the, the, the couple, last couple of weeks or I guess the second and third week of, of August where we typically see a little bit better movement. Um, it definitely played a role this year. Um, but overall, just by making the adjustments we did across this time period, we ended up about 15% or about $4,000 better uh, than what similar units did across that time period, June through August. Um, taking a look at kind of how our competition and us stacked up to each other across the entire year here. Again, we're looking at the monthly revenue per unit for our properties. Um, versus the one to four bedroom Gulf front or uh, waterfront properties um, across Gulf Shores and Orange Beach. And um, it's, it's important to note this, you know, we are, we are really trying to focus on looking at apples to apples here. When we look at this, um, the Gulf front and the waterfront properties here are um, what we're focusing on because that's, that's the comp set that we are, are trying to hold ourselves accountable versus, um, you know, one of the things to note here, this is just to kind of mention, you know, 
we didn't have a great spring. You can see the market actually outperformed us in revenue per unit across the month of March. This is us telling you that, you know, we see that we make some adjustments based on what we see. And, and, and if you take a look at how the rest of the summer performed, um, the adjustments we made were, were obviously, you know, the, the right adjustments to maximize the revenue because um, what this ends up being is, you know, us making those adjustments to say, hey, you know, we're not going to dump it 40%. We're not going to dump it 50%. Um, we're, we're, we're not going to leave it at that initial rate that we felt like it, it would sell at because we saw it sell at that rate in 2022 or 2023. It's, it's finding the right rate in the market and making the adjustments, finding the right marketing strategy to reach the right people, right? Reaching them at the right time in their selling cycle. There's a lot of different things that go into it. And uh, when we're doing our when, when we're doing our comparisons here, we're looking at one bedroom versus one bedroom. We're looking at a two bedroom versus a two bedroom. We're looking at a waterfront versus a waterfront. Um, we're not trying to compare ourselves to you know stuff that's off the beach and in, in Robertsdale or, or Somerdale like um, you know some of our competitors do. So, and like we said, um, overall for the entire year, um, so we just looked at the the summer one and saw they were up fifteen percent or about four thousand dollars. The entire year, we're pacing about $7,000 or about 20% ahead of the market um, similar unit right now. So uh, we're definitely seeing that that things are, are the strategy that we're we're implementing, the strategy that we're constantly adjusting and tweaking and and doing, uh, you know, small little little tweaks here and there, too, is, is definitely helping us outperform the market. And, um, you know, what Bill has mentioned is it's not been the easiest of years to kind of manage. Um, speaking of kind of these comparisons here, uh, one of the things that, you know, I want to quickly mention here is, uh, you know, this this right here is an actual competitor comparison that we're looking at here. So um, th this is someone uh, that, that Bill's going to tell you a little bit more about what their kind of, you know, strategy is, has been this year. Well, I know, and, and again, we're very grateful that uh, owners are renting with us. Um, and I know that you get bombarded with uh, postcards, letters, uh, emails, social media every day, uh, literally every day, uh, asking you to rent. And a lot of people compare how they're doing in occupancy or some of them is nightly rates. Um, and I just want to ask that everybody be aware of what you're looking at. And this is directly from a competitor's website. Um, and uh, my staff made me not put up the competitor. So thank you for doing that. But they're comparing uh, their sales to Bowen County, Alabama, not to Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, or to Waterfront. And not all of our properties are waterfront, but the waterfront is kind of the baseline, right? Other off-beach properties tend to track the beach properties by a certain percentage, depending on the time of year. So it's it's the number to track. Um, and here we have a competitor that's comparing their inventory, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, to all of Baldwin County. Um, and... Uh, Baldwin County includes Foley, and you know there are they're doing sports marketing up in Foley, right? They there are a lot of vacation rentals in Foley, uh, Somerdale, Robertsdale, all the way up Bay Minette. Um, There's vacation rentals in Bay Minette on the rivers up there, the bays, uh, Eastern Shore, and so here, uh, you know, there I can tell you their ADRs are low. Um, now, uh, the percentage there, we even beat the percentage that um, this company is bringing for, you know, comparing off beach. And so this 46% there, that is, includes all of this stuff. And what we're asking is just when people show you numbers and stuff, uh, be sure they're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges. Um, and that's right off of a competitor's website. And I got to uh, clear all the drawings there. And uh, Bryant's going to talk more about, you know, some other competitive sets here. 
Yeah. Um, and so so this uh, this report here comes directly from our Convention Visitors Bureau, um, comes directly from the Gulf Shores and, and Orange Beach Convention Visitors Bureau. And if you notice, one of the things that they do when they look at their comp sets, because, you know, that that's kind of the, the gold standard here is they're looking at, you know, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach and Fort Morgan. They're not looking at Baldwin County. They're not they're not looking at those those other off beach properties any, anywhere else. Um, and I shouldn't say off beach, it's off, uh, you know, few miles up north of of kind of the, the beach area there. Um, th there's a couple of things I want to point out here on, on this slide in particular. And so the first one is, if you look at these three uh, measures here, so you can see for the next 30 days or so, this, this report, um, it was run a couple of days ago, um, occupancy is trending about 5% down or so for the market right now, um, year over year. So about 47.7% right now, about uh, 52 and a half percent last year. So about five, six percent versus last year down. And uh, this time period that we're coming up against right now is, you know, that final occupancy last year was 62 percent. So when we talk about this, this rate uh, needing to be competitive and really driving for room nights and driving to get additional heads and beds, getting additional um, nights booked here. Uh, the reason we're talking about that is because if if the demand or the the occupancy is going to finish around sixty one to sixty two percent, there's a lot of opportunity for us to steal those guests from other people. And so if there's only sixty two percent potential, we need to get more of that sixty two percent than anybody else. And so that that's kind of the goal here. There, there's two other small pieces that I want to point out here real quick. Um, one of them is this week right here that I'm circling. This is uh, this is a a pain point for us right now as well. So we we recognized this a couple of weeks ago and have been making some pretty significant adjustments to really push that uh, marketing wise. What do the lines mean, Brian? I think I need to make sure that uh, that's, that's that a good is. point. So oh. so the uh, the yellow line here is going to be where the market finished in occupancy for last year. So. That yellow line is going to be higher than anything else because it's it's the final the final occupancy number for last year. That's why you see it at the top. Um, the red and blue lines. The red line is going to be where this market, this this Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Fort Morgan market, um, was in occupancy at this same point for last year. And then the blue line is where it is this year. So this gap that we're talking about right here, I mean, this is twenty percent off of last year's pace right now for the market across that that kind of last week of September, first week of October. And so that gap right there is something that we have we've noticed internally. And we've started to make some adjustments to really try to drive people into looking at that time period as a great value opportunity for them to come in here. Um, from a fall break perspective, it is one week before most fall breaks pop out. But there are some fall breaks that we've taken advantage of and we've been able to target certain areas across our markets. I think um, some of North Alabama has those time periods off, for example. We're able to hit those markets and, and let them know that it's a great a great time to come down to the beach. Um, it's the perfect time to come down to the beach, typically. Great weather. Um, water's still very warm. Uh, it's just a fantastic time to be here. So um, we're, we're trying to really push that right now uh, in that dead zone right there and, and try to pick up some of that uh, market share across that time period there. And so moving on to the next part, we're going to look at the rest of the year's occupancy by month. And so um, let's, uh, I, I, let's hold on a second. Let's answer a couple of okay. um, questions. I, you know, see if anybody had questions there. I think we've been through a lot. Billy, I don't know if you want to kind of, I don't know if you can help me here. Yeah, I've been replying to uh, to all the questions. I think the only one that I hadn't gotten to so far was uh, the question about Brett Robinson adding uh, to the market. It's how many more units are Brett Robinson going to add to the market? Already things are getting too busy, streets, stores, restaurants, et cetera. When is enough enough? Well, sure. I, you know, I think the people of Phoenix 1 asked that question when we were building Phoenix 2. Uh, and quite literally. And, and so, uh, you know, there is enough room for managed growth here. Uh, there is more growth. And of course, we, we um, opened 100 units this year open, we rent 60 of those. Um, now there, if you look at 
really what's opening. There's a hundred, I'm sorry, about a thousand more rental units on Verbo and Airbnb than there were a year ago. And it increased about a thousand last year. Most of those what's opening are these PUDs, the stuff, you know, Tannin Village, uh, back, you know, kind of behind uh, that Ron John's, not the Ron John's, but, uh, well, Tannin Village, heck, across from Phoenix 1 through 4 there, that, you know, behind uh, Ruby Slippers there, that huge development, um, adding more. There's some hotels opening, too. Um, we can expect some growth. Um, you know, we're in the development business and, you know, we got to keep doing that. And, uh, but I don't see us opening, you know, 400 units or anything like that at a time. I think good, reasonable, steady growth can be absorbed. Um, and there is growth and, and you can look at occupancy nights, you know, over the years, you know, now the the better units are renting more than 225 nights a year. Um, I can remember when 160 nights was a really good year. And so we are growing, you know, the, yes, the, the inventory is growing, but also the, the demand, the market is growing. Uh, for the area it's an off year but um you know the the overall demand's growing I, I can't answer that other than I think really you know back in 95 97 John we opened there was one year we opened about 400 units uh rental that was Phoenix six seven time frame back in then uh, we had a couple of buildings open in the same year, and that we felt um, it was harder to to manage. But we can absorb and uh, manage these in well. So uh, other things, Billy, I don't know if we have any. I hope that helps. Yeah, the, um, the next comment on here was um, the, the difference between premium and select and how that pricing difference works? Mm -hmm. uh, really, uh, there's not a, I would say premium and select. Premium is subjective. Um, it is really a lot about owner's choices and, and how they want to do that. We do evaluations and Notice if an owner or, uh, you know, designate an owner as unit as premium condo or beach house as premium. Um, now, that is really the decor, and, and it's hard to kind of get. We're going to talk about evaluations in a little bit, but there's really kind of five areas that matter. You know, the the walls, the floors the decor, you know, the furniture, the kitchen, and the mattresses. And and that's kind of how those things are kind of how that comes into play to determine whether a unit's premium or select. The rates are roughly 20, 25% difference, roughly. It just depends on the time of year. And then we have high demand, which is just a unit that the the bookings in that unit indicate that this unit's outperforming similar units. And it really has to do with, um, and I hope I'm not getting too far off of the trail here, but you know, it really has to do with uh, how well the bookings are for this unit. Most of those are, are higher performing units that, um, you know, the owners are keeping up, keeping nice. Um, and the renters choose those first. Typically, the ones that are willing to pay, people are willing to pay a little bit more for a little bit nicer. Um, it's got to be distinguished, though. And so that's what that is. And your rental manager can certainly work with you a little more on that. Teresa um, Melendez is on the Zoom call here, and she can certainly, um, she's our expert. Um, in that. And so 
Um, what, you know, makes a unit premium? And so we could spend all day on that. And maybe we should have a, a, a class or a get together on that. Okay, Billy, anything else? Uh, there's a question in here about the new bedding that we talked about earlier in the in the season and uh, when those are. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the program. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and then there's a question about when Phoenix Gulf Shores 2 would be complete and a CO issue. We, we think uh, June of next year, June of 25 is what we're shooting for there. All right. And then All Martha right. Jane Bell has her hand up. I don't know if we can give her a chance to ask her question. I, yeah, I'm in Phoenix nine and I was looking at my rentals and those vary from uh, Verbo online call list, internet and Airbnb. Maybe everybody knows how these are handled, but I don't mm -hmm. now. So when it's Verbo, does it go into the call center and do they help somebody or are they, calling are they online to get a specific unit yes ma'am miss bell they when a verbo reservation comes from the website verbo.com they are searching for units and they find your unit and they book it directly on verbo and that goes through our system and so it's it's a direct booking we pay to market your condo on verbo or Airbnb, and that's what that means. Okay, I've also got another question. Uh, I know in talking to you in the past, I've been an owner renter over 25 years. So I now occupy my unit six months out of the year. Yes, so yes. I am occupying that a lot. Are you still basing and putting rentals in based on total occupancy of the unit, including the owner or not? You know, the, uh, the, the, we do a rotation, if you will. Uh, we try to book units that are least booked, similar units, you know, and so if yours is a three bedroom at Phoenix nine, you're going to rate on Phoenix, uh, uh, compared to those units based on, it's not occupancy, it's based on dollars okay. um, of what the retail value of those stays are. And so that does affect it, but I would say that it affects it very little. Um, the choice is the renters and 99.9% .9 of them are looking online at the pictures when they're booking. And so it doesn't matter which units first or last. I will tell you the rotation, most of the units on our website, are the last ones that get booked the most uh, that show up last. And, and that's because they're the ones that get booked the most and they have the most dollars booked. Does that make sense now? It's just not worth uh, that your six months is not going to make a hill of beans difference in how your unit books with guests. It's just not, that's the, that's the real answer there. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's get back on it, Bryant, and then we'll we'll come back to uh, questions a little bit later. So uh, get back on it there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we were uh, talking about um, well, we we're just leaving off a second ago on um, the the fall occupancy trends, and as we go into kind of the remaining portion of the year here, um, what you're going to see on this screen is uh, Brett Robinson is going to be in the blue, and the market is going to be in the red here. And what you're looking at is each month. Um, where we sit and where the market sits, respective to twenty or uh, versus twenty twenty three occupancy, uh, at the same time for each of the months. So um, you can see right now for August, you know we paced about flat with with uh, last year's occupancy, where the market saw about a nine percent uh, decline in in occupancy. And um, you know you can you can see right up here you know we're again flat for september right now where the market's sitting about 12 13 percent down in occupancy um october again slightly up markets down up down up to, so you can see the trend here is that um that the market is not making the adjustments for this off season either right now and so what this means for us is there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for us to uh grab market share 
and continue to outperform for the remainder of the year. So we just talked about being up 20% right now, you know, year to date versus the market. Um, that potential to, to grow to 25, 30% is, is certainly there right now as we look in the off season and uh, having the right rate strategy here is definitely going to be a part of it. Um, the other part I'll mention is, is the comp set that we're comparing about down here is the one to four bedroom Gulf front uh, waterfront condos uh, from, from the market comparisons we've been looking at all along. Um, the rest of the year trends. So fall demand is weary right now. Um, and, you know, you just saw it on that last slide. You look at um, where the entire market's occupancy is sitting right now, you know, 12% down here, 10% down here, 5% down here. Um, it's not what it's been in the past few years. Last year wasn't necessarily a banner fall in general. It wasn't, uh, you know, a 2018 or, or 2021 or 2022. Um, and I only say 2018 because we got a big, uh, big boost that year because of an unfortunate uh, hurricane that did did lead to a pretty good um, fall demand for us. But um, you know, fall demand isn't there this year. It's 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 lower than it's been in the past few years, and it's something that we're having to manage definitely very uh, very carefully. Um, market occupancy is down ten percent year over year for September and October. Um, we're we're dragging that up to be honest with you. We're we're bringing it up by being close to to flat. Mm -hmm. Um, occupancy is going to be our primary focus. That's that's where we are putting um, our eggs in that basket right now. We we need to to not give things away, but we need to make sure we have competitive rates across that that time period. Um, you know, in addition to having competitive rates, part of that is 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 we're holding them up enough to run a four, uh, fifteen percent promo. So the fifteen percent promo takes us to a very competitive rate too. So. Um, you know, th this is a part of that marketing process when you get to an off season. Um, you know, we're, we're able to, to control these by making the right adjustments up for the, some of the certain dates where we do have extra demand to make sure that we're able to, to capture that. Um, there's really about 10, 12 days of, of fall that we have some pretty good rate opportunity and we're taking pretty good advantage of that right now. Um, after the shrimp festival, uh, occupancy drops 25% that next week. And, um, that number sounds extreme and it is 100% true. Um, this is, you know, similar to what we talk about a lot of times after Easter, we see the big dump in rate and, and this, or uh, in occupancy, mm -hmm. same thing right now, shrimp festival, and then a massive decline in occupancy for the remaining portion of October. So um, just understand that, that when we talk about um, what we're doing and, and why we're having this occupancy fo uh, focus right now, primarily for the remaining portion of the, of the fall season, um, it's because the, the, there's just, in general, not a great deal of demand there once you get past that shrimp festival time period. The election is still a factor. We've you know, mentioned this a couple of times this year in these meetings, and we'll continue to mention it because it's it's not going away. Um, the election plays a role in, in our booking patterns every year. Um, every year there is an election, I should say. We look at this, uh, we've, we've done good analysis uh, that, that, that we've looked at over years where you look at three years that that may trend in one direction, and then that election year, boom, complete change of a direction. A lot of times, so uh, people are uneasy with the election. They always are. It's just it's just one of those things that um, always leads to a little bit of a decline. And as we're heading into this fall season, where it's going to be really kind of getting down to the wire on it, we expect it to still continue to kind of play in the back of people's minds as they decide whether they want to take an extra vacation in the off season. Um, unpredictable weather affects last minute reservations. Obviously, we just talked about this a little bit with with there being, uh, you know, a hurricane out in the Gulf last week that, you know, was unsure of where it was going to go. And as we look into this upcoming couple of weeks where we have a potential disturbance that has, I think, a 40 percent chance of, of developing into something else. Um, we have to understand what that does to kind of consumer sentiment and how they're feeling about whether they want to go travel or not, or if they're going to really hold off and wait and see if that thing turns left, right, up, down, doesn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't develop, does develop. So that, that always does kind of cause a little bit of a hesitancy and a little bit of a slowdown in our, in our bookings as that kind of thing happens. Uh, where are we looking at for early 2025? Um, we have a very strong snowbird season right now. And um, I will tell you that that is, Always a good start to uh, to a year is to have a good snowbird booking or two in there is, is always a, a good solid way to start the season. Um, I, you know, I know we we hear about this a lot. I will tell you we've we've done the analysis and 
you know, for the most part, our, our strongest performers in any given, um, you know, accommodation site. So bedroom building, almost all of the the stronger, the top, you know, two, three, four, five units that we have in any of those given uh, sets, almost all of them have good snowbird bookings that, that help drive that off-season revenue up. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, the snowbirds allow us to consistently out, outperform the market and revenue across those, those winter months where, you know, it's, 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 it's finicky weather, it, you know, it's inconsistent weather and it's a time period where, um, you know, you could end up with some 70 degree, nice weekends that get you a couple of good, really nice weekend bookings, or you could end up with, you know, snowy rain that, that, that really stinks and end up in the 30 and forties. So, uh, it's, a, it's definitely, definitely, um, a positive thing. Um, this year we expect a later, uh, we expect a good spring because of a later Easter, uh, later Easter, um, for us, uh, means a little more spread out demand across the months of uh, March and April. And so this last year, once you got through that first week of April, uh, everything dropped off an absolute cliff, even more than that 25% we talked about for Shrimp Fest that after Easter this year was just an absolute dead zone. Um, by spreading that out, having it be, I believe, on April 20th this year, um, we'll see a few different markets do different um do different spring breaks across the, you know, five, six weeks as opposed to two or three weeks. And so what that allows us to really do is, um, you know, we're able to target those markets. We're able to reach out to those markets at the right time. We have a digital marketing team that works to say, okay, you know, revenue team says that these X, you know, X, Y, and Z uh, markets are out on spring break for this time period. Their average um, booking window is this. So we got to make sure we get into those people's households with different advertisements and different ways of reaching out to them at, at these different um, stages to do that. So that, that's the level of, of kind of um, detail that we get into when we're trying to target these places for spring. So that's all, that process has already started for 2025 right now, because there are some markets that are already starting to do a little bit of movement there. So um, this is just something that we think is going to really lead to a better spring next year. Um, Post-election euphoria, um, there is always a boost. As soon as you get through that election, there's this major spending uh, increase across things, and, and we're hoping we can take advantage and, and get some really good um, momentum started with that. just happens to also right align with our uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday stuff, and, and so it's, it's going to be a really um, something that we're going to try to take advantage of uh, potential uh, rate opportunities with, with some potential for it some... It doesn't matter who wins. It doesn't matter which party wins. It's no, it's just a it's just a little boost right there after it, and and then we uh, you know, all right, take advantage of it. <laughs> um, our summer plan here is uh, you know we're going to build a strong initial base. That doesn't mean we're going to dump rates. It doesn't mean we're going to come out here and, and charge thirty percent lower than last year so that we can get bookings. That's not the plan this year. The plan is to have good, strong, solid initial rates in place that can allow us to be competitive early to get a little bit more on the books than we've had in the past couple of years. So we're not as reliant on that very last minute booking uh, kind of window that we have been over the past few years and uh, and really take advantage of that. Um, early advanced marketing, just talked about this a little bit for the Easter time period. Well, it's not just Easter that we're able to, or it's not just those, those spring breaks that we're able to track when people are out of school or when people are, are booking. Mm -hmm. We're able to do that throughout the course of the entire year. We have very detailed information on where our different markets book for different times of the year. So we're able to take advantage and target those people at the right time. Um, we're going to hit them early in the cycle this year to make sure that we're really taking advantage of it. Um, competitive rates, again, competitive doesn't mean cheap. It, it doesn't mean that that we're going to come in and undercut and do that. You know, we talked about earlier that competitor who's selling for 300 versus 700 for us. We're not, that's not the goal here. The goal is to maximize revenue, not get the cheapest rates to get the bookings off the bat, you know, and, and get them sold out, sold out early. Um, you know, if you're sold out for the summer right now for next year, you know, in, in most cases, that means we've uh, we've left some rate on the table potentially if we're completely sold out for a for a ninety day time period this far out. So, um, so far though, I, I will tell you we've seen strong indicators. We've we uh, we had a really great uh, team revenue meeting where we we spent a week really developing the strategy for twenty twenty five, and we're able to really build out what we think is a really strong strategy for twenty twenty five. Um, we're able to work with the marketing team to get that stuff in place with the marketing plans as well, and so the initial indicators that we have for next year that things look really good. Um, we have, you know, cautious optimism is probably the best way of putting it. 
And uh, I'm just going to reiterate this because it's important. We are keeping that eye out for that potential to increase rates. If we see that there's any chance that we can really boost things and put them into hyperdrive mode, we are absolutely going to take advantage of that. Um, I can promise you will be the first person and we will be the first people in the market to take advantage of that and make those adjustments. We've seen that, you know, by us having this professional team of people, this is our entire job is to make sure we're maximizing your revenue. Um, this is something we do catch um, earlier uh, than the market, you know, consistently here. Uh, uh, hold on, Brian, I just want to emphasize, you know, if you don't mind, just, you know, so next year, we're planning on starting out kind of a with a conservative, I would call it conservative plan to, um, you know, with our rates, uh, aggressive plan with our marketing, um, and, you know, some new uh, things that we have explored and are working well for us, uh, really helping with, you know, kind of getting the early marketing um I feel like, I, you know, and it's just me talking what I feel like, that the first five months, really the, the spring, will be much better than last year uh, and bolstered by a couple of things. Our, you know, I don't want to call it a trend yet, but, you know, our bookings for the last eight weeks now have been stronger than they were the same eight weeks a year ago. And that's not anything to write home about, but once you add up the other 20 or 30 indicators that we have, we feel pretty good about the first part of the year. So our, our bookings right now, we have a little bit of momentum today as we talk a little bit, not, not a heck of a lot. We have the election will be over. And there will be a, you know, it will be some post-election euphoria. Plus Easter is at a much better timing wise for us to maximize the weeks that we can rent. Um, certainly relative to last year, Easter was the 31st. So um, right now we're starting conservative, but we're hoping and, and you know, if we have C or early signs are good, we will be ticking up the rates. Um, but if the other happens and we don't see an improvement, I think we'll stay the course and, and keep at it, just trying to outperform um, the market and make the best of the demand that we do have and that uh, will become. So that's kind of a, I, don't know, I hope a little summary. Just wanted to emphasize that, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then, Bill, or back to you. Billy, again. yeah, Billy is uh, on there. All right. Um, talking a little bit about our website updates, and uh, I think there was actually a comment on the um, on the on the on the chat here about some of our website improvements and uh, how we're going to continue to move those forward. And I'll tell you right now, we're we're never going to be done with the website. It does almost half of all of the business that's booked uh, in your properties comes directly through that website. Um, and if anybody gets on there and ever needs a hand, we have a fully functional call center that people can call up and they can get first person uh, assistance through that uh, purchase process uh, with somebody that lives right here in Gulf Shores and uh, and has been to these buildings and can represent your, your unit in the best way possible. And we know that that's something that other companies are not able to provide that level of service uh, for the guests as they're shopping. Uh, two main things that we saw on our website this year change is that number one, there's a unified search funnel. And what this means is that in the past, you had to come onto our website and you had to choose which building you were looking for a unit in before you could ever see which units were available. And we were able to kind of follow the lead of what some of the major players in this market do and that is just collect the minimum amount of information from the guests of what they're looking for, and the number of bedrooms that they want, um, and the number of guests that they're going to have here, and the dates that they're coming. And we're able to show every single property that's open for those dates uh, within the click of a button. And uh, I'll tell you, it's uh, it it works very quickly. Uh, that search function is a lot faster than it's been in the past too. Now the next step to that was to be able for us to offer curated searches. 
And we do have a page out there right now that does this, but we're in the process of getting them added to our homepage here in the next couple of weeks, where if a guest wants um, just, just properties that have a, a lazy river, uh, there will be an icon for them to push and it'll pull up every unit that's available with a lazy river. Uh, if they only want to look for three bedroom units in Gulf Shores or in Orange Beach, uh, they'll be able to do that with one with the click of one button right on our homepage. And we're looking for other uh, combinations that are most frequently searched on the website so that we can add those for them as well. And once you get into that search and you see those search results, there's also a filter now where you can filter by any or all of the different amenities that you want to see on your uh, for your vacation. And we've seen a lot of people take advantage of that as well. Now we'll also be able to, and we, ha we do have these uh, up live right now, if you go to our Shrimp Fest promotional page, when you go to that page, you can see units that are available for that exact time frame right from that promotional page. So it reduces the number of clicks that you have to make in the computer to get to what you're looking for as a consumer. And when we send out the promotional email to join us for Shrimp Fest, as soon as they hit that link, they're right on that page with an explanation of, of the Shrimp Fest uh, event and all of the uh, all of the different properties that are available for them to enjoy during that time frame. And so that gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the things that we've that we've put into place already. Now, this is all part of, and Bryant mentioned on this a little bit earlier of how well informed our marketing strategy is. We don't just look at the time of year when people are coming. We back that up to when the people in individual areas around the country typically book their vacation to come. So one example of this is knowing where, when all of the different spring breaks happen across the country in our targeted markets. So we know that people will start searching in that particular area X number of days before that spring break. And uh, we know not only when they start booking those, but when they actually start hitting our website from those different geographies as well. And that allows us to place our paid advertising dollars in front of those people right before they start making those selections and those decisions so that your, your property is presented to them at the top of the mind when they first start their selection process and then repetitively throughout. As soon as a person hits our page, we're collecting their email address and we're sending them relevant follow-up to help them to convert throughout their decision-making process. If they've hit a specific unit page, that follow-up includes that exact unit and other similar units. So that way it gives you a chance to show up in front of many different consumers throughout their decision-making process because we know they do a lot of that online. Uh, and so we're able to provide that through our, uh, through our AI guided marketing and through uh, the historical information that we have on these customers. All right. Well, we're going to talk. Uh, there were a couple. I saw a couple of questions. I, I'm sorry, I didn't read them all. I can't, trying to pay attention and read on the uh, chat. Uh, we got to have somebody in the background read. Maybe if Gail is on or uh, Billy, I don't know if you can do that now. Uh, maybe read some of. Uh, need to make sure we're getting to some of the questions. I want to cover the bedding first and, and stuff like that. And so a lot of discussion, um, questions on bedding. What we are going to be doing is the triple sheeting with a the coverlet blanket in it and the top sheet, the dress sheet, what we call a finishing sheet on top. Um, the scarf and the pillow is... Uh, turned out to be a nine uh, starter or we could not uh, make that work it just uh, unsanitary where we couldn't it wasn't washable those things were not turned out not to be washable um, anyway and that's something that we got to have something that is sanitary on the bedding and so we will be doing the the, the triple sheeting with a new coverlet, it will be in by spring. Um, I'm trying to get to my screen. Got to click on my screen. There we go. New coverlets by spring. And of course, that's the finishing sheet. Um, a triple, it'll be the top dress sheet. We will be adding mattress encasements uh, by spring. 
I think we'll have them all on by spring, and those are pretty uh, pricey. Uh, trying to help protect those, we found one that we believe will be uh, suitable suitable for for the this environment. Um, and I already said we're not adding the scarf or the pillow as we talk, and we're still in search of something I would call accent um, to give it some flavor there. And and I know that is an issue, but. I will tell you the sanitary conditions are trumping the pretty, um, you know, bed spreads that stay on the beds and stuff like that. It's just, it's just, uh, we just need to be sanitary. And so that's where we're going. I hope that answers the question. I think I saw some questions about, um, you know, payment, we do a linen fee and we're going to, I'm sorry, continue. We're asking owners to help share in the cost of that. And you're not paying it all. We're asking it's about a third of, uh, of a, it's not even that, uh, last year's number. Um, we pay that in two increments in the summertime. We take that out and we think when it's, uh, when it's best. And so there is a linen fee and, uh, inflation is hitting us all. Uh, and so we got to keep that in mind. Um, and so we are perhaps, well, no, no, we're a good way started in our annual property evaluations. And we really tried to modify, improve our systems this year. Um, you will be getting a text with the link um for your condo and or beach house and um uh, you know you need we want to discuss that with your rental manager uh we modify the inspection and inventory process we hope that it's an improvement we think it the results are looking pretty good so far um and uh, we're including some revenue performance statistics there for you um, as well. And so you'll be getting some, a little bit more information along with your evaluation. Um, we, it's the, what we're suggesting or asking, encouraging owners, you know, just taking a look at, is based on what renters are asking for, what the trends are, what works best in in units, what we see. And we're not, you know, asking. It's just the choices when you do decide to spend money, the choices are, are, are important. The colors of the walls, the coordinating with furniture, um, those sorts of things. And your rental manager can help. Uh, certainly, at the very least, show you properties that are doing well and what kind of decor is uh, really performing well. And I will tell you, contemporary uh, with a little bit of beach, coastal in it is good to stay away from the traditional wicker and stuff like that, and you're good. Um, but you're going to have to do a little bit along the way. A lot is opening a lot of very expensive properties are opening um and so there's a lot of choices for renters and we just need to make sure that we're staying competitive not saying that everybody has to stay number one every time but we've got to remain uh competitive relevant etc um or it can get away and it's hard to re once you get a bad reputation it's very difficult to recover. And I can tell you some of, you know, the older Phoenix buildings, Phoenix 1 and 2, for instance, have really done well um, and the owners keeping up um, and getting better. And so uh, some of the newer buildings, you know, your Phoenix Orange Beach or uh, Phoenix Gulf Shores, things like that, those buildings aren't brand new anymore. And so it's going to take considering painting, maybe a piece of furniture or something like that, uh, things like that. Now, uh, we can certainly, we probably might ought to have a, a 
Teresa a show on uh, maybe a Zoom meeting on what works best and, and do that. Let's think about that, okay? As you make changes, if you change your wall color, a new couch, not if you get a new, you know, plant in there in a corner or, you know, but major things that will change the appearance on the website. You need to let your rental manager know there's also a way to do that on the owner's portal. It's just a link um, to add there. So um, I'm going to, well, uh, continue on into the housekeeping. Uh, we're asking owners to survey us to help tell us how we're doing when owners check in and uh, you should get a text and if you're not getting this text please let your rental manager know every time you check in the following morning so if you checked in yesterday this morning you would have gotten a, a survey asking how we're doing and ask just a simple survey to see how we're doing um and you know, we need owner feedback to tell us how we're doing. Um, we need to know where to work on trends and things like that. So, but the past 30 days, owners out of five stars have, we've averaged a four and a half, and it just happens to be a coincidence that the numbers are the same. For the past year, it's four and a half stars. And so, uh, we are improving. I can tell you when we started measuring, we were 3.9. And so we weren't quite there and we've come a long way to really work on improving um, the housekeeping and how we do that. And so Billy's going to talk to you what the public thinks about what we're doing real quick. Yeah, so we... We track review scores across multiple different platforms. The biggest sources of these are uh, Airbnb and Verbo. Anytime that we do a rental through them, they they do a great job of provide of seeking feedback, and those audiences are very uh, vocal with their feedback from there. We also have uh, the Google platform. We have pages available for each individual building, as well as one overall for Brett Robinson and. When, anytime somebody checks out, we send them a link to write a review to to help us to to increase those numbers of interactions as well. And we sit, also see them come through Expedia and Booking.com. And of course, they everybody there rates us on a on a five point scale. And you know, in 2024, we have seen an average of 4.39 stars, and that's at over. We've had more than 4,000 reviews uh, so far this year uh, to generate that score. Last year, we finished at a 4.35. And two of the things that we're doing to make sure that people are providing a positive review for us is, number one, Bill mentioned that arrival survey. We do that for owners, but we also do that for guests. And when, we, when a guest checks in the very next morning, we send them that message to let them know or let us know if there's anything in their unit that requires our attention. Uh, we do all of that through text messaging, or they can give us a call, but it's most of them do reply directly to the text. And our call center takes note of any of those issues and issues a work order so that we can get that addressed for them while they're still here in town and we can save their, their experience. We also ask them when they leave to uh, let us know if anything didn't go perfectly so that we can address it. Um, and if they did have a great time, then we want to send them to those uh, to those review sites to help them to tell everyone else how great of an experience they have when they stayed on in your property through Brett Robinson Vacation Rentals. All right. Well, I think uh, now we can take uh, some questions and comments. I'm going to start with voice, Billy, if you want to. I don't know if you got any that we need to read, but I'm going to start asking owners. So if you'll give me a minute. Yeah. Uh, so. One that's on here that uh, that I'll go ahead and answer for um, is uh, looking online. Some units have decorative bedding, which shows so much better. Do you still push the white? We provide white bedding. Uh, we provide the coverlet and triple sheeting, and that's a functional bedding uh, package for the guests. Uh, we think it looks pretty good. Um, but if you want to stage your property for photographs, we can also 
uh, facilitate that for you. And if you'd like to have photos with staged vetting, uh, we can take care of that for you. Just reach out to your, uh, your rental manager, or you can put in a photo request uh, on the uh, owner's portal. We just need to schedule a time when you can be there and we can schedule our photographer to come in and, uh, and set that up. We do need a little bit of notice, um, but we will work with you to make that happen if that's something that you would like to do. I would say at least a two week notice or so. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mark Utter asked, how do I know who my rental manager is? Um, I will, Mark, I will have your rental manager reach out to you. Um, so you have that answer. Uh, you can also look in your owner's portal. Uh, anytime you go to browners.com, when you log in, you can see there's a contact button up at the top and it'll tell you exactly who your rental manager is. Uh, it's different for each building. Uh, some of these rental managers do cover more than one building, um, but in most cases, you'll be able to see that right under the contact list. Um, and at any point, if you want to reach out to owner support at brettrobinson.com, that's our owner support team. And they can probably help you directly. They're a single point of contact for you to get an answer on whatever you need an answer on. And uh, they can answer those types of questions for you. They will also be happy to introduce you uh, and connect you with your rental manager uh, in one short step. Okay. All right, Billy, I'm going to go to Mr. Mullis. There is uh, his hand up. Uh, hey, Bert. Yeah, uh, Bill, you know, we're going to have the <clears throat> big event in Phoenix East with the with the windows being replaced. Yes, sir. And uh, I know you'll be moving guests around as needed. Yes, sir. But I'm, I'm wondering about, are they going to have to take the drapes down to do that kind of thing? And if they have to do, would y'all do that and put them back up? Uh, Mr. Mullis, yes. They have to take all of the uh, window, the window treatments. Thank you. That's how you say it. Down and, and, uh, we will be in contact with you, Mr. Mullis. I, I forget specifically, there have been several buildings that have done that, and each one's a little differently. I don't know off the top of my head what your building decided, but we will let you know. We'll get back to you and let you know what, what their, who will do that and how that will be taken care of. Very Bill, good. Thank you, sir. Bill, can yes, you hear sir. me? This is John Mullis. Yes, sir. I, I think somebody else answered when you uh, called us out. Oh, I got two Mr. Mullis's. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that right. doesn't happen very often. <laughs> uh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Must be just distant relatives. Are y'all are y'all related? <laughs> I don't think so. Not that I know of. Okay. You're not from South Georgia, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Bill, a couple of questions. We're fairly new to this. We're uh, very new in sea spray over in Perdido. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know how these figures tally in compares comparatively between Perdido and the Alabama properties, and we're curious about that. Um, the other question was, um, if I can find my notes, let's see. Uh, are VRBO and Expedia and those uh, resources tied into Brett Robinson directly, or uh, is yes, that something sir. we subscribe to? No, no, sir. Those are things that Brett Robinson pays for. We consider that marketing. And so if somebody books through Expedia, we pay them an 18% fee. Uh, it's okay. expensive to book with Expedia. And you can see there's not much margin there uh, to work at. And we're working with them to get much cheaper. Mm -hmm. But uh, Verbo, uh, Airbnb, we pay a fee to. Every time somebody books, I pay them a fee. Uh, and and that's how that works. But they go through our system. They're booked through us. Um, in the state of Alabama now, the merchant of record has to be Brett Robinson. Airbnb, there's a problem with that in the state, and it's too complicated to get well into in this conversation today. But Something's got to be done about that. Um, but um, does that make sense that everything comes through Brett Robinson? We book it uh, in our system. So all the reservations, every, anybody staying in your unit is booked through us. Okay. Um, I, you know. 
They, uh, like, like I say, we're fairly new at this. Sure. Uh, just bought this condo this summer. And uh, so we're in a process of kind of updating some of the furniture and that kind yes. of thing. When you get feedback from renters, um, is that shared with the owners or do y'all take care of that in-house or has it? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, if we get specific feedback, particularly trends, you know, if we get three people saying, hey, the bed is uncomfortable, we're going to reach out and touch base with that owner about that. Um, it, we working on, you know, making sure owners can see their reviews, but there's some problems. Uh, you know, a lot of people put up reviews and I understand you have, uh, you know, a, a sea spray, but if it's a Phoenix building, many of the reviews on the Phoenix buildings weren't our guest. And so we have to manage everybody's, uh, you know, problems, so to speak. And, and of course we do that happily. Uh, but, uh, you know, it makes it a challenge to get our, our reviews right and to the right owner and things like that. But uh, I think over the course of the next year or so, we can have that ironed out uh, until they change it again next time. Uh, and, and so if that makes sense. Yeah, um, we're wanting to do this right and we want to make sure this unit looks good and does well by renters. So we'll we'll keep the updates uh, current and let you know how whatever changes we make. Right now sure. we're looking at furniture, that kind of stuff. So we'll, right. we'll update that with you. And we just bought bed spreads. So should we not put those on the bed? No, ma'am, I would not. I would encourage you to just let our, our linens, uh, we'll take care of the bedding for the okay. bed, pillows included. All right. Okay, that's good to know, thank you. If you want, if you want photos with those on there, then we can schedule a photo shoot to take those for you, and we'll post those on the website. Um, you know, we we love staging the condominium to show the best light, um, but we, you know, when when guests arrive, they want to make sure that they know that everything that they touch is something that's been cleaned, uh, and so that's why we do the standard bedding package because we can do that in a way that we know that. Any surface their face may touch during their stay has been recently laundered. Okay, that's, that's good news. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. But we did make some furniture changes, and we'll update you with that information as uh, soon as All we right. get it. Thanks so much. Okay, yeah, uh, George, I got George up next. I'm sorry, I got your hand up there. Yeah, just a question. You mentioned the uh, the breading for the spring in the box to go on the bottom. You know the box uh box spring cover yes sir we we would have yeah. a band around that as well yeah which i think is a great idea because all the dust that gets under there and all the all that kind of thing do you have any idea what the cost is going to be to us now now i'm sorry i do not mean that underneath the bed it would be sitting on a box like you have in a hotel that has the bed box I'm just talking about a cover for the bed box springs. Uh, now we have, we would like to go to that model where beds sit on a, you know, and you can't look up under the beds and things like that. Um, but that we're nowhere close to that. Those are pretty expensive. Um, I think, uh, we priced them here recently, and it was uh, definitely no. Uh, and so we're looking for uh, different mm -hmm. systems there. But it, the bed box spring cover, um, if you'll send me an email, I'll send you a picture of what I'm talking about. It's about the only thing I can tell you right now. Okay. I did not get a good picture of the, of the bedding for this uh in time on, on today for this i don't know why i did okay thanks a lot all right miss bale yes um i'm a little fussy about sorry about mattress encasements uh -huh. and i put the very best i could buy on my mattresses mm -hmm. So when you talk about buying new mattress encasements, yes, ma'am, I'm sure that they're going to be very good. But are you going to take mine off, or are you going to put them over 
what I have. You know, I, I don't know, Miss Bell. I hadn't, um, you know, I don't know that it would fit over. I don't think it would, but I, I don't know. So we haven't tried that. Um, and so we'll see. Um, but you can certainly talk. I would talk to the housekeeping supervisor at your location and uh, and they can certainly be aware of that when we go to do that. And we can make sure we work that out with you. How soon is that going to be done? Bill? It'll be gonna... done, before, you know, by spring. You know, we'll be um, implementing that and it, it might pass spring break, but uh, certainly into the spring. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Billy, we got other questions on uh, Miss Terry. Miss Terry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. I think what, what you're really speaking about um, is the bed bug encasements, right? On the mattresses. I mean, that's that's what the, that's why I have in, well, in I, I will tell you the bed bug encasements don't really work. Uh, and they don't keep bed bugs out. Uh, you know, oh, they, they well, will keep them out of your mattress, but it does. Listen, we've had several units, uh, several bed bugs with bed bug encasements on them. So uh, it's really to protect it. I would say liquids, you know, things of that nature um, is really the real reason. Yeah, because I, I mean, and the reason why I say that is because that, you know, I, I I was a renter in a house that I had a house that I rented before mm -hmm. I, I got smart and got condos. <laughs> um, and we had horrible problems with bed bugs. And so I, from there forward, have yeah. always put the encasements on the beds and I've not had a problem since then. So um, I just, I just didn't, you know, I think. I guess I just need some clarification as to what you're talking about because I still I have I have a they are designed you bug. know they will these encasements say they're bed bug um, you know that they're yep. that but I will I, my I will tell you there are no bed bug proof encasements the bed bugs don't need that to to survive right they can just live between the two mattresses or you know, in other corners. In other words, they might not get into your mattress, but they're going to be there regardless. That, that's what we have found. Uh, now, don't panic. We, you know, I think this year we really had a low year. Teresa, you were on how many have we had this year? I don't know. Um, it's not many. definitely have. very minimal compared to previous years, so it's definitely down. I don't have the exact number, but I would say it's less than 10. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, um, and when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about all of our, uh, even our non managed unit, because we do the HOAs, right? The HOA management, I'm talking that includes that too. So um, we're talking at about 6,000 units. So uh, that's a lot. Just not many of those instances. Anyway, I'm sorry. Next, uh, we've got Billy. one more. Uh, yeah, Kevin is uh, trying to raise uh, trying to raise a hand here. So hopefully we can get Kevin to join and ask their question. All right. Yeah. Hey, I'm here. Uh, I'm on my phone. I couldn't figure out how to do that. Okay. Hey, so I have a quick question. What What's taking so long? And I was the one that asked the question about Gulf Shores too. We bought that back in 2021 and. I remember correctly, it was projected 30 to 36 months. June's going to put that, uh, you know, way, yes, pa sir. way past that. What, what's the holdup on that building? Well, I would say, you know, COVID was the the real, you know, the in, the inflation and, of course, the, the permitting took a little longer there. But uh, we are, you know, uh, on track. And, of course, this, you know, I don't have all of the details on construction. I'm sorry. I, you know, we're I, my daytime job is the rentals and the uh, the management, and I am on our board, and and we do discuss construction and things like that. But I I will tell you, I don't I don't know specifically. Uh, I would encourage you to talk to your sales agent, um, and that's the person that would know the most. Um, 
right there on that. But we're looking, and I, th I think I saw a question whether that was CO. We're looking at completion. We're trying to finish a little bit early. But right now, our CO date is in June. Uh, I would say the early June part, at, at least that's what I think. And then um, that's my thinking. I'm not telling you that's the answer. That's not our company answer. I'm not saying that. Um, but it will take about 60, you know, and we'll press the, the move in. It'll take about 60 days. Uh, I would certainly plan. Um, we would like to start with probably, if it is June, it's going to be looking at maybe a Labor Day type rental to start. Um, that's the earliest we can do it. It just have to get a new building like that ready for renters. There's a lot of stuff you have to do. You got to move owners in. That takes a while. Um, stuff like that. It just takes a little while to get a building ready. Um, we did got Phoenix Gulf Shores 2, I mean, Gulf Towers 2 and Gulf Towers 1. We did those in 60 days. And we'd like to try that again. Um, but but that's uh, this building's a little different. We don't have the the floors of parking, and so we're going to rely on elevators a little more for move in there, uh, and that's going to delay the move in a little. It's going to take longer to move that building in, so that's a challenge, um, you know, that we got to address before we get there. All right. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. And I'm, how how can I find out? Um, is there someone that I can contact? I'm curious. We're looking at another Phoenix property as well. What's the best um, rental return for the for the for the for the cost? How can we find out statistics on that within sure. the Phoenix all of the buildings? Well, I would talk to your 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 sales agent would be the one to talk, and you know we certainly work with our sales team to provide them that information. Um, you know, and, and that's um, where I would turn. Okay. And I'd make okay. the sales agent work for you. Gotcha. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That might be a perfect segue to hand it over to John to talk about real estate there. John, there you go. Thank you. Well, yep. So you're, you're ready now, huh? I'm ready to go. Well, before you uh, put the slide up that where we start talking about uh, the sales information, um, as, as far as Phoenix Gulf Shores too, Bill, you answered it perfectly. I'm like Bill, um, I, Bill and I are partners. We sit in on all the weekly board meetings that we have and listen to our construction. But um, as a point of beginning for construction of Gulf Shores two, the purchase agreements, uh, that all of our customers sign, our 30 months starts when the we receive the foundation permit. And it's a it's a guess as to how fast the city of Gulf Shores is one entity we have to go through. That is more of a definable um situation where we we believe we can get pretty close on that the the thing that's hard for bill and i and our partners to determine is what u.s fish and wildlife uh with the alabama beach mouse uh how fast they move and so that building down there is in a mouse habitat so it's in what's called a habitat control program or plan which is you know it's explained in your uh, condominium documents, and and certainly myself and or your sales agent can explain it a little bit more. But each condo owner pays equivalent to two hundred and one dollars per year into a fund to help keep the dunes out there in place, which protects the building. But also, that's where the mice live. Um, there might be five my, mouse mice out there, maybe, <laughs> and uh, it's amazing what we have to do for them. But we once we receive that permit, that's when you saw us moving sand and then we have to dig the hole and it takes a good year to put one of these foundations with 700 piling that are 
80 feet in the ground. You know, our buildings are typically much heavier than comparable buildings because of all the additional concrete we put in there. And so, um, so the clock started ticking when we received that permit. And so that's when, you know, so if you purchased early on prior to construction, um, the, 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 the clock didn't start running until you saw construction coming out of the ground. And I don't know if that makes a difference for you, but um, that that was something I wanted to throw in there as far mm -hmm. as that's concerned. Um, as far as what units work best for the rental return, um, you know, I, I could sit here and go, well, I'm going to throw that back on uh, Bill's department because they're in rent, <laughs> you know, but we know as sales agents, uh, the, the, the units that, that rent really good, a good return, I guess, and overall appreciation, um, the, the three and four bedroom units, four bedroom units have been the hot, a hot trend for a while now. And, and so the four bedroom units, uh, if you look at what someone paid at Phoenix Gulf Shores 2, for example, pre-construction starting price versus what they will sell for when they're finished, it's, it's almost double in value. You know, they, it's like double in value. Now, the market has something to do with that, the great market that we've been through, but, but those four-bedroom units are very popular. Uh, and 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 listen, we opened up Phoenix Gov Towers uh, last year. Phase one will uh, it, you know we'll be turning over the HOA for phase two here on the end of this month. I remember reporting uh, last year that the prices paid in Phoenix Gov Towers Phase one, which are duplicate units, floor plans of of Gulf Shores two, uh, what they started at like a, a four bedroom, they paid nine hundred thousand dollars. Uh, at the time we had that meeting, they were selling for 1.8 to 1.9. They doubled. Same thing with the three bedroom units and the same thing with the two bedroom units. We had two bedroom units in that building. So really all, all of them do well. All of them do. It's kind of hard to pinpoint one. All right. All right. So you want me to just thanks for that. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, it. John, let's get on the let's get well, on the yeah. all right. Uh, uh, as as you can read here, uh, in 2024, we've had 707 condominiums uh, units close. This is these are units on the beach and on a main body of you know large body of water. Could be uh, on the lagoon and Gulf Shores, and certainly you know like Phoenix on the bay, bodies of water like that. So there's 707. I understand it does not include would not include like Phoenix Gulf Towers that we just opened. Is that correct, Bill? Right, right. It does not include that. That would that would throw another 96 units in there um, versus 951 the year before. So in 49% of the people buying condos pay in cash, absolutely. That's a huge part of our market. Um, of course, that leaves the other half needing financing and that's very important. Yeah. Um, We've said that 52% 52, 52 of the condos listed with Brett Robinson sold for cash. So, you know, our, our cash buyers might be a few percentage points higher than the average down here, but that is certainly a large part of our market. Uh, medium price uh, for sales is $536,000. Uh, very comparable to 2023. Our market is holding steady. It has not, it has not dipped. Uh, it's, it's holding very steady, which is very promising for us. And then uh, the median sales price for condos listed with Brett Robinson, $750,000. So, you know, compared, if you look at all the Gulf front units, condominium units down here and, and off the, the Gulf, on the, on the body of water like, you know, Phoenix on the Bay, um, Brett Robinson's listings are typically higher or we're in Phoenix condos compared to most of the other buildings down here. They are a little more expensive. Uh, they hold their market value very well in comparison to comparable buildings. All right. 
right? So uh, you know, we all know, well, most of us know, or have heard at least that inf inflation is falling. Um, so it left 2.5% in August. And you guys know the feds just finally lowered the rate for the first time uh, by 50 basis points, which is a half percent. And that's encouraging uh, loans or rates with lenders are a little different than the Fed rates, but they, they do follow the trend uh, with, the, with what the Fed rates do. So they will come down as well. They're currently around 6.75, somewhere, sometimes up around 6.9%. They fluctuate a little bit based on geopolitics and, uh, you know, tied to the treasury bills and stuff like that, but they will come down as well. Right, first reduction since uh, 2020, and we do expect more, hopefully. So that's that's a good sign that will help our, our keep our real estate market stable like it is now. Okay. So if you want sales information we've got it uh just to let owners know we have opened up a an office in florida here recently uh john i don't know if you want to um and we we're, have some we will be renting uh and are renting uh in florida we have mr mullis one of our first owners there from from florida thank you um uh, absolutely we're looking forward to growing our business in in that market it's beautiful over there it's and there's an imaginary line that you cross there uh but the, the beauty and the value is all the, all the same and we're looking forward to 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 being in Perdido key and that helps us get uh, more business in florida in alabama as well just having the florida tag there it does help it does Jesus. help in searches etc and so um all right, I think uh, that is essentially we had uh, Tim, my brother, was going to be there. We do, Billy had mentioned an owner support team. And so we've set uh, additional people, created a new department, if you will, this, this summer. Um, and that team is available. We have some what I would call experienced managers there uh some may know Delmi's uh one of those and uh who other billy i'm sorry we got uh but Delmi and sabrina yeah sabrina and Delmi handle most of those sabrina. during the day and then we've got some people that work during the evening too so that no matter when you call we can we can help you out okay and so texting uh, you know is convenient right and so if you like you can also call um you know direct voice um and you can use this qr code here to get a link to to that as well it'll actually create a contact in your phone um that you can save and that way you'll always have these numbers and that and the email address convenient anytime that you want to contact that team and and so and what is that for that's listen you're don't know who to turn to you you getting crossways you're not getting the answers you want you're not getting the help you want things like that um and uh, take it a step further i'm gonna put my cell phone up there um uh bill i'm just gonna write it i'm sorry it is two five one four two four zero four two five you can call me to, i would encourage you to text me please um but if you're frustrated not getting the service that you deserve um or won't uh please call me 24 you might have to call a couple of times if it's 2 a.m but i promise you i'll get it uh and get with you um and we have a chat team. They're on the website as well. And so if you go to the owner's portal, there's a chat bot there. They are also live on that. So uh, just if you have any questions. Um, so 
Billy, anything else on chat? Nope, it's easy. We uh, and we have people uh, monitoring it on a on a daily basis from eight a.m. to eight p.m. So okay. we're here to help you. Okay, uh, Miss Dewar, uh, I, I see you asking. Hi. Yes. Uh, Bill said about taking pictures of your unit. If you yes, take pictures with the uh, bedspreads, and then guests come in, and it's different because yes, I know when we first started. Yes, when I had a guest call me and said, did they forget to make the bed? So I think the pictures are to be just like they're going to see it when they get there. Well, that's, that's, uh, that is. We, um, I know, Ms. Dewar, that that's the thing, but this seems to be okay for now. And oh, well, well, I am 100% for sure. the beds like they are. Sure. But sure. The, the question was for the new owner, that you'd come in and take pictures. And I think that's misrepresenting what you're having. I don't think it's, uh, uh, it's not my preference, uh, you know, and, but mm -hmm. I think the renters are liking the sanitary bedding better than they like. Oh, they are. They yeah. are. I agree one, 100%. But my statement is that if you take it with bedspreads, take the pictures and they're on the website and they come in, and it's the white ones, they want to know why. Right. Well, you have to appreciate, and all owners need to really appreciate that mm -hmm. we have a very loyal following at at our properties that we manage for a reason. We've earned a, a good reputation. It's not perfect, uh, but we've earned a good reputation. Uh, this, you know, the having the sanitary bedding really gives the renters a trust and a confidence. 80% or more of our customers are coming repeat customers. In other words, you know, if we were a, you know, a, I'm sorry, a Vacasa or something like that, most of their customers are first time customers. They get very not most, but they get far fewer repeat uh, guests that repeat year after year, or you know maybe it's every three years. It, it you know, but the thing is, we have a very loyal following. They know what's on the beds. They want that sanitary bedding. They, you know, and, and so sure, some of the newer customers might would pick a a the picture of the nicer bedding over the white but i think for the 80 percent and the people coming and the people that are referring their friends to us that that this is the best plan at least for now we are certainly not satisfied and so we keep working it and we'll keep it up until we figure it out um, you know, what that perfect plan will be. So I think it's good. Um, thank you, Ms. Stewart, for your input. Other other questions, input? Y'all letting us off easy. <laughs> well, okay. I will tell you what, I will stay on. My staff and everybody can sign off. Brian, you're going to have to give me control, right? Um, and so my staff, though, everybody can sign off and I'll hang out in case anybody has other questions or points they, they need to get, uh, um, I'm sorry, I had an owner here, I had, uh, Katie Caps, uh, cancellations, uh, Miss Katie, I'll get with you later, um, uh, and talk with you if that's okay. All right, Billy, any more things on the chat? I don't have any in here. Um, you know, I, I just want to make sure everybody knows that that owner support team is yours to use. And uh, please reach out to them. If you had a question that you weren't able to ask today, please do that. Uh, we will have the video of the call uh, and notes from the call and the slides that we went over available in the owner's portal uh, at some point tomorrow. Uh, it just takes us a little bit to get it all set up there, but it'll be available for you and uh, easy to get to. And if you can't figure out how to get into that, just 
give us a ring and we'll walk you through it. Okay. So thank you. I'm going to be standing by and I'm going to, I'm going to quit sharing my screen or Billy or Brian. Yes. Oh, Mr. Jones had to say roll tide. Oh, that's terrible. Didn't have to run a good meeting. All right. Hey, Bill. Yes. Those boxes that go underneath the beds, are are they available? I, I, I don't have like... any available. We tested okay. a couple, we tested a couple, but I don't know if you really want one, I could probably get you get you in touch with somebody that could help you. Yeah, I just kind of like the idea. It keeps the underneath of the bed, you know, clean. There's yes. no dust or crumbs or whatever, you know. Yes. There's always something there and you know, if it I, in your opinion are they worth it? I I think so. We're trying to figure out a way to do it on a budget right and uh you know type thing um what do you what are you thinking it's a bed like 500 bucks a bed i it was pretty expensive it was yeah. not far off of that oh okay because they you know average five beds but you know right, 2500 right. bucks but right. it stays a lot cleaner and i don't know well and it, it just makes it a little neater it just, yeah. it just makes things a little neater so mm. we're we're working on it um okay don't give up. I, Mr. Brown, I think, had his hand up. 